excellent. Hey, congratulations for uh, being part of this documentary, Sexploitation, which is being showcased here at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. How do you two feel about uh, you know, a documentary like this being showcased at a film festival? I think this is amazing because I think the area of sextortion and child exploitation on the internet is such a huge problem that nobody talks about and it's such a big deal that we really need to shed some light on this and I'm hoping that this film will help make everybody aware of what's going on and how we need to protect kids on the internet. I echo that. It's, this is something that nobody talks about. So having this out there, I think, is going to lead to other teaching opportunities that not only will our agency have, but other Internet uh, Crimes Against Children task forces. Now, a lot of us hear about you know sex trafficking and traffic, human trafficking and so on. How is sex sexploitation different? Is, it, is this an entirely different category? Absolutely different. So we always have this overlap of human trafficking and child exploitation and sextortion and all that. It's very different. This is children being exploited online and being sextorted online. So it's very different. It doesn't have that element of trafficking in it, but it's really prevalent. It's a huge issue that children are online, they're meeting strangers all day, and those strangers are manipulating and grooming those children to do things that are terrible. And from my work and what I've done for, what, 15, 16 years, child exploitation and sextortion is way more prevalent than anyone ever talks about. We always hear about human trafficking, and human trafficking is, on its own, a major problem. But this problem is much more prevalent because it happens to everybody, every day, in every community, and we're not talking about it. So it's really amazing that this film can bring that to light. So how many victims are we talking about? thousands, uh, if not more, tens of thousands. I mean, with this investigation and every other sex extortion investigation, we, we, it's hundreds each time. So, and and our, our focus is victims, you know, identification, that type of thing. And in this case, we didn't, we didn't identify the hundreds, but there have been cases where we do get into the hundreds. So it, it, there really is no telling on numbers because we don't catch it until we catch it. So, you know, some of these two, three years will go by before we actually identify a victim of, of the sextortion. And, and I'll just add, we have cases where there's individuals or groups of individuals who are exploiting thousands of minors across the world. Mm -hmm. And this is happening all the time. It is, because the internet reaches everybody, it is a major issue across every single landscape in America. This is a... There's no demographic that isn't touched by this, so it's something that we need to get people to understand, like, this could happen in every household in America. Are there telltale signs or warnings that people should actually be aware of in order not to be a victim in, in this uh, case? So the biggest thing I always tell people as far as, like, preventing this is when children are online, they should only be speaking to and talking to people that they know in real life. That is the biggest thing. And not people that they think they know. Confirmed people they know. So there's a lot of grooming activities that these offenders use, but it's easier to say, hey, you shouldn't be talking to people you don't know or people that you don't actually have met in real life because the things that they're doing that we could actually pick out to say, hey, this, these are all the indicators, it, it, it could show anything. It could show a lot of different activities. So there are things we try to teach kids to say hey, look out for this look out for this but the number one thing is you have to know who your kids are talking to online and kids have to know who they're talking to and understand that people are not who they say they are so ultimately who is who should be the responsible party is it the parents is it the, is it these uh, companies i mean who i mean it, it could be all over the place uh, the parents i think are the first the first line uh, and then maybe you get to the schools and, and, and people that the kids interact with probably more during the day than they do. Uh, you know, when you're asking what's the telltale signs, I mean, there really isn't any, but if you start seeing your child act differently, then there's probably something wrong. Um, or, or, and talk to them. I mean, it's all about communication, you know, knowing what's on their phones. Because these apps these days, they're, they're going to change from one to the next to the next, sometimes because it's more popular or 
they don't want their parents finding it, that they, they're looking at Facebook, nobody's on Facebook anymore, now they're on Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok, you just never know, you just need to know what's on their phone. Most excellent. Yeah. And I'll just say that we are working with industry to try to make sure that they're doing everything they can do to recognize these grooming behaviors and these illegal behaviors because it is upon them as well. I, I really believe that. We want to educate children to not, you know, to recognize the signs of somebody online who's a predator. Educate the parents on what to do to look for those predators mm -hmm. and look at your children. But industry does play a role. There, there needs to be oversight and there needs to be a little bit more proactive activity from them to say, hey, we see somebody that has activities that are like a predator mm -hmm. and then let's figure that out and let's push that forward so we're trying to work with industry to make sure that they're doing everything they can in addition to everything else most excellent one more thing before i let you go when people watch a documentary like this what is the one most important take that you hope they walk away with my number one take is pay attention to what your kids are doing online and understand that People online are not who they say they are. And if kids could get that through their minds and, and adults could get that through their mind, then maybe we'll be a little bit more proactive in how we monitor our children online. Yeah, and I would say that just to realize who you're communicating with, in this case, they thought they were talking with a, a like age, you know, boy that their age, you know, were appropriate. And it's, I guess it just shows you how easy it is for somebody to create a fictitious persona and communicate with your children. And, and a lot of people that I've talked to, victims, we, you know, we would say, that they just think that it's their online friends. When we initially start a conversation with them and say, hey, do you know who so-and-so is? They're saying, oh, that's my friend from Snapchat, Instagram, or whatnot. And it turns out, obviously, it's not because they've never met them. Well, then this is a very important uh, issue that we must, must, must address. So thank you very much for making us aware and talk, carrying this conversation with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.